Wonderful. Kun, I'm recording this. Is that all right for you? Yeah, perfect. Wonderful. Great. I saw a few of the interviews already. It's quite fantastic what you what you're doing. Oh, thank you so much. Yes, I think you know the. Um, I, I mean, uh, I don't have much, but I can. I think you know if we can talk about this and people start trying to to think about solutions, then. Um, and of course, talking about what the problems are, then I think then maybe there could be a solution or there could something positive come from it. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. Right, and so maybe course, talking and we're trying to find each other, I think we, we will achieve some things. From where yeah. do you call us in? From, uh, from Vienna? I'm in Vienna, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm originally from South Africa, but I live here yeah. now, yeah. Yes. Dus we kunnen even Zuid-Afrikaans spreken. We kunnen Nederlands spreken. Ja, ja. <laughs> ik kan het waar goed verstaan. <laughs> ja, ja, ik kan het ook verstaan een beetje. Ja. Ja, ja. Um, uh, Kun, but are you, do you um, live in the UK or do you live in Belgium? Um, normally I am I'm this kind of tax resident without domicile in the UK because I live normally over 180 days in the uk oh i see, oh, I uh, see. but now with uh with, with since i have to say since the 17th of march i'm basically in my in the country where i where i have my house and where i live okay. and, yeah but where i'm hardly during normal seasons i'm hardly at home so it's uh and most of the time in london and then from there i travel yeah and and um so in belgium so you were in london when they announced the lockdown and then you went back to belgium yeah Okay. Yeah, it was quite an event. I was in, I was, uh, people remember those dates now, isn't it? It's like the 12th yeah. of March. We still had the last performance of Swan Lake in London. Mm. And then I had to go back home on the, the Saturday, Sunday. And in Belgium, we had already the lockdown, but the UK wasn't closed. And I had to be back to continue and rehearse even with, it, with the second orchestra I was in charge for Swan Lake with the Royal Ballet Symphonia. And I tried to convince them that the situation was quite serious. And they said, oh, no, 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 COVID is, is not hitting us that, that strongly. Some people said, oh, it, it's a UK version, which I would say it's a nice kind of parenthesis for the English that thinking on the island, it would be different. And yeah. so I said, no, it's really serious. So we finally, we, we canceled the rehearsal with that orchestra saying next on Wednesday, Thursday, we still will have time because we had two players who were probably already positive. And, um, and that's the evening on the 16th that they then canceled the Traviata show saying, no, it's done and that everything was cancelled. Uh, we had Wayne McGregor in the wings, and Wayne said, but it's all over in Europe anyway, everything is being cancelled. Munich was already down, uh, Vienna was down, uh, Belgium was after that also down. So many countries were down except for the UK. Yeah, I heard um, also that the, uh, I spoke to somebody who said that already everybody heard of everything being cancelled except for, yeah, in the UK. But how was the, uh, so, so uh, could you then quickly come back to Belgium? Was it there then an opportunity for you to come back? Yeah, the, the borders were still not closed. Uh, so I, I just took the first train on the 17th, the next day on the Tuesday, back to, mm -hmm. to Belgium saying, and there was hardly anybody on the train, but there was no control at all. But like it is still now, now it's a little bit better. I would say not better, but rather there's more control and, and traveling. But then it was just like saying you have to be careful. And you just when we, I went on the train, I was I was alone in, in the in the couch. And uh, arriving in Brussels, the, the was already nearly empty, but the lockdown was already uh, settled in, in Belgium mm -hmm. on the 17th. They they closed down on I think Friday the 13th. But now when this happened, did you think it will last long, or did you think okay, it's going to be three weeks or 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 a month or so. Um, I had friends who were dealing quite a lot uh, in, in, in art dealers in China. And I was like warned already two, three weeks before, Kun, this is going to be severe. But in Europe, they still don't realize this. They, it will hit as it does. There will be, uh, it will close down and nobody will know exactly when it will open again. So I was like prepared for, I said immediately when we were making plans and in Birmingham and in London, I'm perhaps a kind of pessimistic but a kind of realistic i said this is not this is this is not for two three weeks i don't think we will start over again in may i think if we will be back in may next season 
will we be very lucky? And they thought that was uh, kind of really. Mm. Um, so it was more. Uh, every country, of course, reacts com has reacted completely different, and uh, and then before even a country got to some kind of conclusion or a strategic plan. Uh, it showed again that Europe doesn't exist, which is, of course, just a confirmation uh, in many ways. Uh, and what it still is, it's I was now in, in Italy uh, back in the Scala and then Belgium is, a, is, is not a red country. So I didn't have to quarantine arriving in Italy. But Italy in Milano, Lombardia is, is a yellow zone. But arriving back in Belgium, I had to quarantine for a week uh, mm. because in Belgium, Italy is a red zone. Now oh, we're looking into the new plans. Uh, normally in London, we will start up again on the 18th of May. It's, uh, it would be our opening night with public and, and with social distance orchestra. Um, and we checked even this morning and Belgium is, a, is, is not a red zone. So for the moment, I only would have to quarantine for seven days and not stay in one of those hotels. Oh, I see. Um, okay. But it's mm -hmm. like every country is, is, is so different. Belgium had cancelled most of the shows until the end of the season. Uh, and and now, yeah, and and in London now, will there be half uh, the audience, uh, fifty percent, or, or? Yeah, we go down even more. I think it's it will be eight hundred fifty, and the the, uh, the normally we can get to more than, just about two thousand, a little bit more than two thousand. So it's mm -hmm. down with more than half of it. Um, but can you tell me when when this happened, when you went back to Belgium? Uh, how did you um, deal with it in, in that time? Uh, uh, what did you do, uh, you know, with, with all the time? Because I know for a conductor, it's a bit different, you know, you need an orchestra. Um, yeah, it's, it, I had very mixed feelings, of course. It's like suddenly I had an, an like, let's say, just a kind of incredible, busy complicated time in front of me with two or three productions at the same time in London I had been away for a long time and when this lockdown came it was like okay suddenly it's ground zero or ground below zero but I never was quite pessimistic about that I had I think like so many other people also uh, lists of plans that I should do and I thought I would be very active immediately on on but it's, it was at the same time a shock, but I never was down into what should I do now? And I miss so much what I should do. As every house, I must say, I'm working for different organizations where I work still also for the Antwerp Conservatoire and, and uh, the president of the artistic board. And in one week we got digital. Um, oh, it's okay. like saying before when I was away, uh, sitting on a team or on a Zoom was, what are you saying? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, now it, and, then, and in one week, everyone was online. Uh, and then we were all like we now chatting, so working. Uh, so that took quite a long time. I have an ensemble for contemporary music in Belgium that I sometimes that I'm very aware of what is happening, but I wasn't very active. So immediately we launched the project with them. Um, we had meetings around. We worked very clearly on, on many things. And then of course the shock waves came over from from London and from Birmingham. How shall we deal with it? And um, it's like. I thought it would be an empty space, but it was suddenly filled up with, uh, of course, when I'm in a production, I don't go to many of those meetings. And suddenly I said, why shouldn't I go to all of the meetings? So instead of having an, an empty moment, I was behind my computer nearly from morning to evening and meeting people in the organization that I had hardly met before. Uh, uh, as as um, in my position I, I, in, in those houses, a lot is done because the offices work absolutely fantastic. So I don't have to deal with a lot of the details. And suddenly I was, I could choose, but I liked to know exactly how do we function in fact. So I got to know and London and Birmingham, I mount some conservatoire in a completely different way than just being on, on the top of the pyramid. You come in and you work and you uh, daily business, but that is everything except for all these meetings. And so I, I, I enjoyed very much knowing the people working and then getting to know the people much better. And, and working together on how to to get out of something that we didn't know where we were in. So it's it was in the beginning absolutely um, very inspiring at the same time to see how uh, an organization and how we can deal with it and, and with a lot of how the reorganization of working in that way together came came across and um, 
it, it's it's it, so and I hardly had time. I had my scores immediately. Of course, I said, okay, Rheingold. I never learned really very well. Rheingold. Let's put it on. I put it on my desk. Tristan and Isolde had my scores, but I. They kept that as a kind of reliquy. Oh yes, I will have time for that. Of course, I rearranged my library. Uh, I'm sitting here now in the studio for where we do the contemporary music, but the, every everything is rearranged. So I took time for that also, but it was not the main focus. It's um, and yeah. it, it was just switching, mm. and I had no time to think it's empty because it was more full than even before. Uh, I actually spoke to a, a teacher at the Royal Ballet School and she said the same thing that she said that suddenly it was these Zoom classes that she had to do with the children or the, stu the, uh, the students. And um, she found it fascinating because, um, and this is also what I want to ask you, is she said something very interesting. She said the children were now at home and, and more relaxed also. And you sort of saw them in their natural environment at home and and uh, connect also with the with the parents uh, sort of on the side um and did you find that as well that it's more it 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 became more a human side or a or a or a uh, you know or a more um a warmer type of meeting you know that it's not just uh at the at the opera house or in the offices but it's now home you know from one home to the other home um i think for me it was double it's like and in, in, it's true you suddenly you get into all the uh private environment of everyone and nobody is everyone is a kind of differently dressed and it's so funny that when they get up you see he's in a short instead of being in as no so yeah. you see uh, or then all these glasses and then you think it's coffee he's drinking no no definitely it's a glass of wine and, and <laughs> so uh, it, yeah. it's this way of suddenly dealing in a completely different way with communicating that was absolutely of course fascinating and and getting more private but for me um it became also on, on moments when you just connect on this way you you go faster because you, there is no there is no real chit chat, and mm. I think this chit chat is so incredibly important when you work together when something is coming in, and you have to absorb or you, there's something that is bothering you. There's no way anymore. You there are no un, unofficial. There are not I think so many unofficial meetings. Let's say we have a drink together tonight at six and everybody is chatting again and oh, moaning moaning is very much part of our business i think oh, okay. and the room for moaning <laughs> doesn't exist anymore so this comes into another place mm -hmm. and you can feel then also they, then you put on a zoom meeting i was in like in the morning in birmingham and then it, you switch off and immediately i was in in, uh, in 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 amsterdam and then i was in stockholm and then and then i'm back in london and in antwerp and then so on one day you travel and there's hardly a second in between one meeting to the other and this and the awareness of time became very strange. It's like when mm -hmm. you start at one minute too late of somebody is coming in one minute too late, he's incredibly too late. Yeah. And in normal <laughs> meetings, one minute, what is one minute? Everybody always comes somewhere. So you know it's going to start, let's say, 10 minutes later, but everyone is ch chit chatting and is uh, dealing with, with humanity. And this fell completely out. So it's double, you see people in in the private ambient and you say oh he's in the kitchen the other one has is in his bathroom because he has no place uh the other one oh has a beautiful window with trees behind um on that way it's like it becomes very personal but uh without room for really deconnecting together yeah there i yeah. felt the, some on, 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 on moments and in and on some moments where it became very lonely because you have your screen that is two-dimensional and like the classes, I must admire the dancers in, 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 in all the companies who uh, immediately got into their small places. And I saw like, like in, in the Dutch national, Ted Brand immediately had his bars on. Uh, with us, it came a little bit later, but that the whole company could shift in such an incredible quick way and staying positive. And, and, and that happened in many companies that you could see that the follow-up was, was direct, directly very strongly, let's let's get it done and we will see when we get it out and, and gradually the hope went down of course and yeah and, and but also the practicality and the way we could deal with it changed and improved and and um it's a whole cycle of up and down the whole time yeah i i um i find it also very interesting i mean you work with both sides so the orchestra and the ballet world but that uh, the ballet dancers 
uh, the their bodies, you know, changed also because because they couldn't be that physical anymore. And the you know, in a, in a small little uh, living room compared to a big studio, the movement. And also, I think I think the space that they used to having, and and also the the interaction with one another in dancing, um, but uh, but also in an orchestra that must have been uh, you know a situation because orchestras also and like you also it's this uh, connection between people that you suddenly don't have. Yeah, I think for, especially for the orchestra. Um, it became quite problematic. Of course, we found it's Rotterdam Philharmonic who started with, I think it was ninth of Beethoven and finding all these click track systems. And after a while, everybody was busy. And the connection, uh, I was on the WhatsApp group of the Opera House. I was allowed to, 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 to get onto, onto the group. And the, the group never was that strong as now, because normally a musician, he comes in, he plays and, and he, he speaks and goes home. But now everybody, communicated in a completely different way because we had that WhatsApp group. And of course, the specific situation um, with furloughing, with, with change of contracts, but that happened specifically in London, uh, made the group very unified uh, and collaborating with the direction. And with it, in London also, we immediately had all these off productions of two musicians playing together, of five, of 10, of 60, of 80 people playing together in, in all these different projects. and. Um, then we had also, of course, a lot of these discussions as what is coming out, what is content for the for the website of the company, and it's not every product coming out from a dancer or from the orchestra that is meant to be uh, immediately in in the front line oh, of I what see. companies mm. wants to sh wants to show how they are and um, and um, but there I think across the organization also suddenly where we work all like chains together and we hardly know what we do. You could feel that suddenly management team or PR team or uh, the development team or the technical team and then the orchestra and the chorus and the dancers, they all get to now in a different way. So I hope that doesn't go away, that when we come back, yeah. we get back to our perfectly functioning islands that yeah. we join where we have to join. But there is, there is this sudden communication in between the groups in a very well functioning opera house that is changing. Uh, and changed radically in many ways and, and um, I'm going to these executive meetings all the time in, in London and then you can feel that there is another way of thinking of each other and there's another way of respecting each other and seeing problems that sometimes before were only there but we didn't have to bother about that. So there is, I think, definitely every institution who, uh, who had to rethink how to survive will come out in a different way and i think i hope in a, like in a better world it's it's that we went so deep and the, the crisis is still so incredibly uncomfortable with the the financial system that most cultural uh, institutions function it is when we don't have the public we even can't produce so it is it is a very very complicated system mm -hmm. to, to get on and there the, the way every organization tried to find or online or uh, and I was recently in Milan uh, doing this Giselle uh, with the company. And then we had this Nuriev Gala was on and the day of the recording in the morning, they just said, okay, we can't do it. We have to postpone one of the dances is, is, uh, is positive. It's postponed two weeks again. Uh, now it's again postponed. We don't know when it's happening, but every action that they do is also to get and to keep the group together. Financially, it's a disaster, but at least the dancers are there. They show with the money that they get from the government, we do something. The uh, income is nothing. Uh, it's a very, but it's to get back the orchestra in place, to get the dancers in place, to get technique to, to work. Otherwise, mm. uh, as you say, we you can't just continue in your in your kitchen and and uh, yeah. completely demolishing your 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 muscles or your training or your behavior of working together. Yeah, what what I also found very fascinating uh, uh, when I photographed these artists and 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 had a chance to speak to them. Uh, we think of the financial aspects also uh, when we think of all the industries now say in the restaurant industry and and businesses and so on but i think what we what we do not take into consideration here is that for uh, artists that 
<laughs> that are connected with a with a say with a opera house or a or a, a company uh yes they have maybe not the full salaries but they do but and and i hear that also from other artists where they say yes I, we have been compensated but this is not the problem the problem is that it is about the art and it's about the the um you know the playing or the dancing or or this thing that uh you know i think is the is the is the thing that is it's the um it's what we don't understand as as non-artists that uh you are doing this job if we call it a job not because of the money you are doing it because of the calling of of wanting to do it and um and i think maybe this is also the the problem is that the theaters stay closed and the the artists really want to be there and they want to try and find a solution how they can be there on the stage how they can make it possible to not only perform but also to make it possible for the audiences to come in the in the theater do you also think of it uh, find it that way that that the frustration is really that you cannot perform or that you cannot you're not able to to do this uh, what what you want to do um is absolutely i think it is uh, the way we are trained and the way we are used to work i think for most people from even when you get in after five four five years in a house you get into a way of working that you don't have to question anymore and you know you can deliver in the way you your expectation is and and hopefully you get that until the end of your appointment in, in the house or you, you're performing um i think there are people I could see this with colleagues and also with with, with dancers on, on many different levels that some of some of them they took the chance to very be very disciplined connecting with what is called the technicality or the the professional uh, attitude to keep in shape in in every way and or in the mind or with the body or with the hands uh, and then took the time to uh, reflect on what they had been doing for the last five the last 10 some of them the last 30 years and could get into a, a new dynamic that normally you never have the chance in life that suddenly you can say stop and when will it start we don't know <laughs> this is yeah. quite i would say it's it's absolutely incredibly frustrating but i, I saw some people who got out i had a, a discussion with one of the the principals in london now and suddenly he was explaining me how music functions he has been digging into music theory like never before uh, and also like in photography and filming you could say wow this this suddenly he he in this lockdown period he has achieved the level of two other professions and mm -hmm. he's still incredibly in shape because he has been running outside inside choreographing more than he and thinking so it, it is down to i think in the in every individual how they could deal with it um and um what we try also in birmingham and in, in that's when Carlos Acosta said the main thing is that we perform in whatever the condition, if it's smaller groups, if it's smaller repertoire, if it's uh, with bubbles, if it's um, training with more pianists and with, with tape, suddenly you never have class with tape and suddenly this was possible because at least you could get into a room with some more people. And, and um, then the question, of course, with the public is, is so complicated. So how, how long can be a performance you people during the break, they want to have their drinks. They 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 have to go and wash their hands. They they so getting in the public in the way that is obliged to be is mm. is it's very difficult to put on the show. It's much more. I think there there is an awareness also that is again different because people now are aware that it's being on the stage is perhaps one of the best jobs in the house you have. Uh, yeah. But normally it's it's like. And, and evidence but now it, it got to know now the people who brings us in the way we have we, we had these five performances not four finally and for nutcracker in london uh everyone was everyone was very impressed with how the technic could achieve that backstage if we got organized mm. to be even able to to uh, to change costumes and before it's it's you never think oh yes it's going to be there and suddenly no it's not so, so normal that in the bubble team from from the uh from the technical side how can we how can we do how, how many dances can we 
uh, bring on stage. And this is not linked because we have we are so many dancers. No, this is linked because we have so many costumes and we have so much space, and we can only allow so many people at the same time at that in that surrounding. Mm. And um, I was I was really delighted and so and and. and I wouldn't say surprised because you could expect this, but it was absolutely like that. That suddenly you could feel that the group was there and all getting to it together. And that yeah. was also very man very well, incredibly managed uh, uh, in, in the houses that I worked. So it is, it is this frustrating thing, of course, not to, not to deliver and yeah. to get into these complete different habits. And I think that depends, I believe also in age, um, I think once you get a long certain time, of course, every performance is like a new challenge. You never know what it's going to be, but at least there is this, you know how to deal with it. Mm. And when I came back after seven months with Nutcracker, I didn't, the, the, the weirdest moment was when I was back in Amsterdam in, in October and I had to step after six months for the first time again on a podium. Really? Because I had, okay, we're back somewhere because you have to step up in the, in the rehearsal room. But after one second in front of the orchestra, you don't feel, oh, it's seven months ago. But I can believe that when you're a young dancer, when you're a young musician, and suddenly you get back to it. And then the shock must be much bigger because you don't have this, um, I can't call it professionalism, but this, this, this habitude, this, this way of mm -hmm. dealing with, within a glimpse, you just know what you're doing because there's no way you're lost. It's like driving a bike after five years, you still drive a bike. But, um, it, and, and I think that that must be incredibly difficult for younger people getting back, not delivering, saying, OK, I was nearly principal. Now I'm not principal. Shall I, will I get back? I think all these doubts, the same for musicians in trialists and trials in an orchestra. Uh, how will be my shape when I get back? I think there's a lot to do with how will I be delivering when once we are back? And I think this is part of the the, the, the feeling of not being able to deliver is that your revolution is stopping. Yeah. And, and that is, on, 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 I think, on every, for everyone, a completely different story. And I can see with some youngsters that are dealing with it, others who don't deal, who really get... And, of course, we don't speak enough about And I think that, that it's we, we I don't know how it's in, in, in Austria, but we get these statistics, and it's all they're always about how many people in hospitals. You can't get enough people in hospitals. So many deaths, so many COVID positives. They never speak about all people who are in, in, in this problematic situation because of a few thousand people. And of course, we have to be, we are human, so we consider the weakest. But at the same time, there are so many people who are also very weak, but who are not being considered now. Oh, no, we pay them, so it's all solved. And there yeah. I completely agree with you that the point is, it's not because... You have the money less or or the same. It doesn't really matter. You're just completely out of your ambient. So it's quite disastrous that to also yeah. to getting back. Uh, yeah, I understand what you say because here also uh, uh, with with everybody I've spoken to, you know, they started doing other creative things, and I, and I find this is a very a very uh, part of of the artistic side to then start photographing or start cooking or start painting and and you know it's like almost this urge to express yourself or or to to do something creative mm -hmm. um but i do also i've also photographed a lot of students from the mdv and and MOOC here in in vienna and they have this very um difficult situation that they were on that year where they graduated or in that year that they graduated and this is also many things many times that i've heard that they were supposed to do auditions and they were supposed to enter now the the real world you know uh, um, after graduation and um yeah i think that was also you know that's also a part that we don't think about but it's i think it's the entry level at at the university, you know, the ones that really worked hard and wanted to come and study or, or it's probably the same at the Royal College of Music, but, you know, they, they, they've worked hard to get in and now this happened. And then the other part is the ones that are heading out, you know, to the... Mm. Yeah, we had, I was kindly, I was nearly every day on these discussions in Antwerp in the conservatoire of people getting in how shall they first in March, we still thought, 
of course, officially that we would, could have normal exams, then it was cancelled, then we would have normal entrance exams cancelled, then we now again uh, are looking into the possibilities of, of how shall they do their final exams or in the five years, how shall they do this? Um, and we're still not there. It's like for people who are studying foreigners from Spain coming to Belgium, it's very complicated. Shall we do it online or how can we do it online? Um, and the end exam for someone who is in front of a chorus now, it's just a disaster in, uh, in front of a, of, a, of a brass orchestra. How can we, how, how can, there's, you can't do it. it. It is, so you stop, as you say, the evolution of someone in a, such a radical way. Uh, and individually, what we saw in, it was in, uh, for theoretical courses, but also for the practical exams on their instruments, um, that even there, the results were, rather even better sometimes than they were in normal situations oh, really? it's like there was no. there was a, a different focus it's like they said okay we can't do that and that we have time now more to concentrate on the instrument um the same on the preparation for theoretical exams or for the papers they have to deliver i think instead of sitting at home and or finding the way to go and chat and drink with with, with friends as this doesn't, doesn't exist anymore we spend a lot of time with how mm. shall we accompany the student in this incredibly difficult time uh, with much more attention, personal attention, uh, activities. We learned them how to, to work with their computers in a different way, how they could install their SEMS with, with, with better software, with better hardware. Um, uh, we, we changed also the infrastructure of the school uh, in, in, in many ways. As I said already before, Zoom before was kind of impossible mm -hmm. now we can have easily the meetings you don't have you don't have to go so we will go also we, we, the evolution will be much more into this hybrid form um, the other day we had a presentation for a new ballet with chris wilden from new york i was in antwerp uh, uh, someone else was in munich in berlin from all over the world dancers from venezuela we were there with 200 people listening to chris explaining the new ballet uh, this right. never would have happened before then you would have had let's say 50 people or even not, but now suddenly 200 people, it's not because they're available suddenly, no, it's because we are, we don't have to move and from where we are, we just can join for, a while, for one hour. Um, so in that way, there is, a, I wouldn't say there are a lot of positive sides of this crisis. We should have used all these things before. We were very slow. <laughs> it's, yeah. but it's, uh, I think that's where, and there you're absolutely right with the school, with the kids and, and, and preparations, it's like dreams. For them, it's very difficult. I think this is a new generation. I still don't say it's a generation lost. I don't believe it's a generation lost. It's going to yeah. change. It's perhaps one, a little bit later, uh, but they had some time, I think, also to reflect in a different way. And mm -hmm. it could be that you have noticed these people that are focused, I think, especially with dancers. I think when you see how they come from school six years and they build up and build up from six until the end of their career at 42, they hardly have any minute to think. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And now suddenly they are forced <clears throat> in, in a dramatic situation. Yeah. This to was self actually reflect yeah. in a different way. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it's that the result will not be that negative, mm. but it's it is drastic, that's for sure. Yeah, this was actually that inspired me to start this project because two of my children are ballet dancers and I saw firsthand how they were affected. And okay. that, you know, started made me think and 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 I, of course I, the, when I, the more I've photographed also musicians and I, I don't have any insight in the music industry and and uh, you know then then I started hearing and this is what actually made me so passionate about this project that that uh, you know we should talk about this but what I I um, I heard a lot of these what these young musicians I was also very adamant that I wanted to photograph the the, the students because I think yeah. they are the musicians of the future and they are very important for me in my project as well. Um, but what I think, and this is my theory, but it can, it can be from, I live on cloud nine, so, so you would be probably <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong. Just um, give it. <laughs> so um, I, what I was telling them to, to motivate them, I was, think, I was telling them that I think they will start a, 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 a new movement almost in, in music because they are young and they are at the at the say the rock bottom of the of the, the in uh, you know of the of the 
industry really they starting off so I, you know when you start off everything you do is is an addition to to something and and i wonder if they with their young minds you know and and how they see things and how they will try and get solutions if they would maybe start a, a movement a new movement in music and that we could later on um like in in every uh crisis in the world there always came a movement from and that we would mm. see the young musicians bringing something something different or they they do it differently or maybe collaborate in a different way but that they will find a different solution than for example the musicians that's been in the industry for 20 30 years and i think you're absolutely right i also exactly think what you describe is, is it, it's going to be drastic even there also again to the, 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 the very near future. Um, I can't stress enough that, um, in fact, that the difference in between dance and, dance and music is that a musician still to possess his instrument is working alone at home. Yeah. And so if he is five hours alone and he can say, oh, finally, I had five hours the time to work on my instrument. I don't think a dancer will be five hours in his kitchen to do these ex morning exercises. What the dancer needs is the group. Is the is the it's yeah. like with actors, they can continue in in uh, even online, but still you need the physicality. And there is a lot of happening with young musicians, especially before they possess their instrument, that is happening with their own practical one to one teaching. That also uh, suddenly wasn't questioned anymore that it's online. I remember the discussions one year and a half ago on online session with a professor is impossible. Now we have teachers who are staying at home in Berlin and they just teach and they say, probably a lot of the of certain classes we will keep online because it's it, it, the concentration sometimes is different. Now, technically we get somewhere, there are programs where um, the, the, the problem of, of, the, of the speed is not that problematic anymore. Um, so it is for them also, I think for a young musician already, I remember in my time to get, I was, I was discovering, let's say, hence the symphony number two. For that, I had to go to the library to check if the score was there, if the recording was there, getting home, then delivering it again one week later. So it was a kind of an expedition just yeah, to listen yeah. to one piece. It was very, wow, I found that piece and it took me the whole morning to get to the library. Finally, they told me it's there. No, it's again someone else. Could you keep it for me? Yes, that was next week again. So, yeah. and now you just push the button and it's in front of you. And this was, of course, the last 10 years already like this. But now for the young guys that they say, oh yes, there's this music there and this festival, I just took, and you go online and you see from all the venues. Uh, now, normally you go to Otto in, in, in London, let's say, that's the, the place where you go for experimental music. It's all online. Uh, you don't have to go somewhere. somewhere. No, I just come from home. Look, what shall I look tonight? It is, it is even to choose is, is even more existential <laughs> question yeah. than uh, shall I look tonight? No, let's take a Netflix. It's too difficult to choose. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's even getting there. So um, I think information wise, how they have to get along how they can concentrate in a different way. I think for musicians who really focus, I, don't, I think it's again, case by case. There are some, I feel this that a lot of the youngsters who are, they are missing the time in between, in between two lessons to, to speak about their doubts, about their problems with, with each other, with the colleagues, with, 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 some, with the professors. For that, you don't go officially online. I don't know if you did this a few times. I did it a few times to have, let's have a drink tonight at six o'clock with some friends. Uh, let's have breakfast together. Let's have a cup of tea together. But it doesn't, it, it feels still very weird. And then you, you just can't speak. You can't go into different rooms or speak with one. It's like everybody listens to everything. Yeah. Um, but then that, that is, but this uh, focusing for these young musicians, it's like they can easily say, oh, let's have a lesson from that professor. You call them and then you can have a lesson from whoever in the world you can if you, if you look for the, the, the right connection. Um, we saw this in Antwerp happening also a lot on, on the open days that we have, that people come. But suddenly we have from all over the world people coming in and just having the, 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 a kind of window shopping. It's happening now so evidently. And before, no, you had to go, you had to be present. Now you have people and you just can go in and they go out and... and Nobody sees and has remarked even you get you got in and and mm -hmm. so for someone who now really knows what he wants and is looking for it, 
it's an incredible time for someone who is less clear with how he has to develop. It could be more problematic because there is just this ambient around mm. uh, that can help to make decisions. Um, but I, I definitely think, as you say, that we're creating a kind of new generation. We, we spoke about the millennium kids and now we will be the, the Corona kids. Like I have the Corona dogs yeah. already, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Corona, that's what will they do without, with those dogs after Corona? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but it's, it's, for that, it's, 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 it's such in, in, in I, it's difficult to find the word, but it's, it's gripping in, in such a fundamental way mm. that it's, I think for composers, the same for, for people playing for the way we communicate, the, the hybrid form of online and contemporary music will be used a lot when once we have this uh, phasing around, mm. but that's easy when you have a fiber installation, you have the right software, you can play together with whoever in the world uh, without having the problems of timing. Um, you say, oh, let's have a concert night with five people. Where are you? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. And you just start like they do in, in yeah. pop music. Uh, Classical music is quite behind, I think, when you compare to pop music, where it's all installed from before Corona. We're getting there, but um, this facility and this freedom of using uh, what we and, and what we need for being for uh, getting this evolution or understanding where we can go is is just incredibly uh, available now. Mm. But I also find it something very interesting that, that artists have this ability to find solutions, that you have this ability for creative thinking, for problem solving. And I think it comes, it, it's part of, uh, this is what I thought about a lot while I was walking between uh, houses, you know, um, how everybody uh, sort of, you know, they, they, they acknowledge the problem, but they've already sorted it out in their heads of they, they, you know, they start collaborating or they, uh, you know, form ensembles and things. And, and it's almost as if the, it's, they, they're busy the whole time thinking how they can solve this problem. Mm. And uh, this brings me to the point that I'm really passionate about. And this is um, education that I think that, uh, this whole problem of artists not feeling valued because this is also something that I hear a lot that and, and I'm not talking about the value in, in, in financial value. I'm talking about, you know, that um, artists feel that they are not valued in the sense that there's not a solution coming now for how can we open the theaters? How can, you know, that the governments maybe not try and figure out how can it be safe to open a theater because um, for the artists, but also for the public to, to visit these theaters. And I'm thinking that we have to start thinking about the education system and change the education system because we still uh, in a system that was designed for the industrial era. And now we have uh, more evidence, more scientific evidence. It's already proven that music, that art, um, I mean, dancing, if, if you see what it, 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 the brain development and that we shouldn't now start insisting that children study art from the entry in school, not when they're 16 and they make a decision to go to an art school, but that it's a fundamental that art is, um, alongside subjects like maths and science. Yeah, you touched a lot of uh, items here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, uh, I would start, I think the artists, and I would say in general, I love how uh, cooks, how they immediately got into creativity to, to open their restaurants again in the, in the ways they did. I think we have seen more creative people than ever before in, in this change. And the artists are part of it, or the ones who are in the arts business are part of it. But I saw uh, so many different professions suddenly say, okay, guys, that's it. How shall we switch? And there has been so incredible on in every field creative solutions. But that doesn't um, um, flatten down, I think, the reality. When I was a kid, they, it's, it has been the item of all the time. They said there are three things that are important in education. That's being aware of aesthetics because that develops your being. That's mathematics because that develops your mind. And that's physics because that develops your body. 
and I think we're still not there. Mm. I think those three, they said, if you have this from six till 18, they will be able to do whatsoever. So they even said language, okay, your language will follow, but what is needed is being aware of the mind with, 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 with arts and, and aesthetica, or how do you call it, if this is now dance or if this is just recognizing what it is beauty and what is not beauty, what is beauty for you, what is beauty for someone else, the construction, the, so the history of, 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 of arts, performing arts in general, physicality, that's just sports, and then the brain, by, by, that's enough. It's, I think even the Greeks were already very <laughs> knowledgeable about those three aspects. And we're still down like in Belgium again. So should we give music or should we give uh, dance or should we give in, 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 in basic school at 12? I think the discussion is just declining in, in, in such a radical way. So that uh, we get into, into a very strange way of thinking about functionality in, of human beings in society. And it's, it's um, um, I think in, in Austria and Germany, I think also in the UK, it is, still better when I go to all the galleries and, and all of these countries and you compare this to the galleries we have and, and museums in Belgium. Uh, then they say, I'm so jealous of the culture in the, in the, now in the, in, the, in the countries I mentioned, because they have all these kids around in the schools, the, uh, in, in the museums, you have these educational patterns that are outside of the schools. And then you even can say it's not enough, but I would say in countries like, like Belgium and I think so many other countries, it's, it, it's even much further that there is no attention to the to those three aspects that we should develop. Mm. Um, and um, that about being essential as performers, I think that's a very complicated discussion, especially in these times. I think that, I think we, we, we could have a panel with, all, with everyone around, everyone will have his own idea and then we would place it in a different place because then you start suddenly fighting is sports. Yeah, should we pay the, the vaccine in Belgium the, at the moment? It's like, should we pay, should the, the Olympic, uh, guys, uh, athletes have the vaccine earlier than the artists. That's the discussion we say, but it's an absurd discussion. Just get along with it. And of course, athletes for the Olympics, they are those symbols for a country that can unify a country. Um, if in an opera house, an orchestra starts a few months later, nobody will know except for the four or 5,000 people who go to the opera. So yeah. it's, a, it's an absurd discussion. Even. Should we get first? Of course, but can we get first? I don't know, but you can't compare. Uh, yeah. Of course, there are millions looking to our athletes, and now we're very proud that Nafi Tiam got the gold medal in the five camp in the, of the of the European Games. Um, but they don't speak about the Flemish Opera, who again had to close down. No, that's minor. So, where is the value of some certain things? I think the value is for me absolutely there. That uh, in the ed educational pattern, as you say. We should get back to the basics, and uh, apparently, it's not that much attention. We should go just go back to the Greeks, and and uh, or to the 18th century, or to go to to different system where learning a song. And my brother, he he teaches in basic school uh, music, and then he brings good music. If it is now classical or the Beatles or or uh, U2 or uh, whoever or, or Lady Gaga, the good music that he he, he shows to them and. And, and you see this with, with, with kids of five, six years old, they don't, uh, I have a grandson, grandson, and he loves Saint-Saëns Dans Macabre because he saw this in a park in, in the Efteling, but most of the time he listens to, to, to heavy metal. Mm. Uh, and that's where he, he, can, he, he sings all the texts, he doesn't know what he sings, but he sings all the texts behind and he can mime all the rhythms. Um, but he doesn't want to go to school for learning music because oh, it's boring over there. <laughs> <laughs> but then he starts. But, but he then starts singing Dans Macabre. He knows it's completely by heart. Or the Nutcracker, they're looking. They know the whole story even better than me, who did it more than a hundred times. They can. And then you saw, and then the mouse there, and that, that didn't happen there. And now it happens, and they can see all the differences in one show, because they don't judge whatever is classical or yeah. What, or, or, or and and I think if they don't get this, it gives them values that are much much different than. Uh, or insights in what it is to be a human being. And, and, and it's a fundamental loss, as you say, when it doesn't get that place that it should, should have. Mm. Because I think the attention is so much now on maths and science to get into. So for example, I spoke to somebody who said that, you know, her child has to study maths to get into a school, a specific school. And I think, isn't it also important that art could be 
uh, uh, criteria for getting into a school that that it shouldn't just be maths that uh, that that makes the the criteria if a child could get in a good school or a specific school at um, what age do you speak now uh, it, the, the case you're speaking uh, at what what age does he has to know more math is this 12 year or 18 or yeah i think it's to go into gym, gymnasium uh what is it uh 12 years old yeah 12 years old that's mm. that's very that's i think in some border schools in england i think there are also different rules yeah um, it's like going when you want to study for engineer when you're 18 of course you have to see if your level of maths is big enough but that's because yeah, then but, specifically yeah. you choose for that but when it's for kids i would say how do you how do you climb a tree is as important as your maths as exactly exactly as or yeah. as, as uh, being able to Mm. listen to a tune and to sing it again i think those three are as important exactly and, mm. but i didn't know that for 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 graduate for graduates like for 12 12 years old must be very special schools probably they're very expensive for certain I, <laughs> I yeah, from, I've, yeah. Uh, I don't know the school system so well um but it was yeah it, it's uh, it's not it's not a, it's not to go to university or something like that yeah <laughs> But uh, Kun, tell me something. Um, was there something interesting because you were very busy with all your things, but was there something you did that you've never had time to do? Did you start cooking or baking or gardening? Well, I've always been cooking. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've always been cooking, so I just improved. Yeah. Um, what was an interesting, uh, as we live so incredibly unorganized, I mean, unorganized in an organization itself, with when do you get up? What do you eat in the morning lunch? So during this whole time, I've been eating the three meals a day that I didn't oh, okay. do hardly before. Yeah. And um, I was diagnosed quite a while ago that, that it's also erythair, uh, that my um, uh, cholesterol was very high mm. and that my I was nearly uh, pre-diabetes. Oh, and, okay. it's a, and, it's, and it's a friend who told me, Kum, but why don't you attack this now? Because you have time. Mm. For yourself to 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 cook in a different way than you not usually do you can take more time for that or reorganize yourself and i followed uh, of course the, the so-called now keto diet and but in a different oh. way with with special act with with, with different accents a uh, low carbo keto diet mm -hmm. um so I've, I've been eating more than before but much more vegetable vegetables uh, i've been cooking oh. with kind of like the Otto Lingi style but with, with my own interpretation because I love to have everything there and then to start I don't follow the book uh, mm. but I'm inspired by the book or the restaurants I didn't go of course as the restaurants were closed or after a show there was no show so I could eat let's say in between seven and nine in the morning in between 12 and two at lunch and between seven and eight in the evening so my digestion system completely changed I lost in between 10 and 12 kilos and without wow. medication my diabetes mm. is gone completely Fantastic. without medication mm. and uh, my cholesterol is completely on a normal level mm. without without a diet just because That's of a diet so if you ask me what what to do when, when you have time never go and for your diabetes or your cholesterol take any medication don't believe any doctor just change mm. and do it for three four months so That's fantastic yeah so on that on that there mm. and 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 as I love cooking, I changed. I had once ago, a while ago, 15 years ago also, that I had um, a lot of, um, um, not sugar, but, but um, the acidity in my blood was very high. So oh, when, okay. I had, when I had back pain, immediately the muscles remembered. And then mm -hmm. I had also for six months that I, no alcohol, you know this thing, no alcohol, no coffee, mm -hmm. no carbo, no, and then whatever list of no's, that is very impressive. Uh, but with a lot of also new things to, to discover like like all these species and all these herbs and, and, and new vegetables and mm. so that's one one passion that got even more accentuated because uh, normally then i get home after a show and, and then i start cooking but it's it's easily the things that are, we're not supposed to eat and it's easily one glass two glasses of wine a little, little whiskey and i don't exaggerate but it's easy going then let's and it's one o'clock two o'clock in the morning before and then morning sometimes i skip breakfast and, and now so that i got addicted to that and, and i've been reading books i think like many people i had my list of books and and now i have to place on one side the books i bought the other side of, the, of my library is the books that i've been reading and i wow. connect 
and, mm -hmm. I, and I could take the slow time to read them, not the fast time where you want to. So it's, mm -hmm. I didn't read all the scores that I wanted to read. I didn't listen to all the CDs and the music that I had planned to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, let's see whenever time comes by. Uh, I do my morning exercises on a regular basis that I didn't do before. So I get into, I got into a certain self-discipline that I was always dreaming of that I thought, okay, we will have time and my body is strong enough and, and I have time for that. But it's, it, it's a friend who really convinced me to, to focus on, on, uh, on basics. Mm. I think we all, I think we've all at this standstill has brought this um, new, you know, f f discovered new things and new things about ourselves and, and yeah, it's, it's actually great. Um, I think I, I see it this way that that even though we call it lockdown, it's given us so much more freedom, you know? Yeah. Mm. I think for the people who could survive this in a normal, let's say, acceptable financial situation and, and could accept that we had to be very flexible and putting on a different place our aims and desires and um, I could spend finally much more time at home what I hadn't done for years or what I lost, I tried, I tried to, to find again. It's a very strange and difficult process also. Suddenly mm -hmm. to be, uh, to say, no, you don't move, you're just home with the family and the, you know, the grandkids with, 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 with other friends around. Uh, and so it is, it is this very, um, yeah, not to say we, like I always call this like in sports, whereabouts. You always can, I always was very good in my whereabouts. When I wasn't in oh, London, yeah. I had to be in Birmingham, and I had to be in Paris, I had to be. So I could always like, and, and in my working relation, I keep, I always kept kind of with Skype, but this, 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 of course, Zoom is functioning much better. I can't do publicity, but it, mm -hmm. uh, it, it works in a way for me much better. Um, but this virtual reality, mm -hmm. suddenly, although we live with this virtual reality, uh, changed in many ways that the real reality became much more real instead mm. of, okay, it's enough when I'm there with the mind, now I'm there in person. Yeah. And that, uh, that's also an incredible change, of, of, of a very radical change. Kun, you're talking so interesting. I want to ask you another question. Um, ah. <laughs> uh, now, um, also something that I thought about was that uh, uh, since I, I mean, uh, I never knew any of the artists that I've photographed, but there was a um, sort of a very heartwarming, I was always received very heartwarming, you know, like uh, invited sometimes in the times when we still could go in the houses. Some, you know, in the beginning, I, we just talked through the window and so on, but there were many that invited me in their houses and, uh, and had a coffee and had a chat. And it's, it was so interesting because I got to know all these things uh, that made me think about uh, this uh, situation for the artists. But I was then also wondering if it, if it isn't also the fact that artists are very distant in a way, like you were also saying, you know, you, you're in the, the orchestra, uh, people see you, you know, n only in, in that situation where you you are on the podium. And also, of, of course, in opera singers, we see them in their costumes and things. And, and it's always in these wonderful opera houses. But that we don't really connect with the artists on. And, and I'm not saying that it should be very personal, but it's just like now we're connecting. Now it's possible to connect. And now it's possible to talk about things and talk about what artists do, you know, and, and I, I, for instance, I never knew that they studied, you studied so long, you know, that it takes so much time and that you, that it's not just one master's degree, it's sometimes three master's degrees and, and it's, and, you know, and I think if we know more about that and know more about the, the path that you have to take to become an artist, you know, that there's also a different appreciation. Um, yeah, you're touching a very, of course, for personal base. I'm, I'm very um, aware that, that a lot of people, they, we, we, get, we get mystified in a certain way. 
because we have far distance, it's like a far distant princess somewhere. You never will be able to touch. And once she gets into reality, oh, is that the princess? Um, um, but um, it's like when they say Beethoven, when he was in Vienna, of course, he then went into the Zip but Zip and then he was there walking into the woods and then this place and inspiration and the nature. No, he was just calming down and, and, and putting things right and not at all getting inspiration, just. Hey. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so it is a lot <coughs> of this mystification that, um, of course, what you see is just that, that one little end of process. And it's like with a composer, then you see, um, it's of course this fragile zone that everything what is before, that sometimes it's, it's not the best place to show sometimes even because it's, it's, it's a tough, I think when you see an athlete, we only see them for the 10 seconds, he's doing the hundred meters or for the even two minutes, he's running the eight. So it's life is gone in 10 seconds that you go from nobody to world famous. I think in sports, it's even tougher than in the arts. Um, and what all the pain and especially I think still for dancers, musicians, we, we got skills and then we have to work. It's more like discipline that after a while you get into discipline before a dance still every day to go on like for a sportsman, as you can see, uh, like Federer now go, coming back, he's 40 and he's still coming back. You would say, why? And his two knees has been broken again. No, 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 he wants to come mm -hmm. back. Uh, it's like now we, we have this dancer in, in the Royal Ballet, Steve McRae. We, I was doing his performance where suddenly his, uh, his, one of his muscles broke down in a show. We, we heard it in the orchestra, we stopped. The most, it was like an animal crying on stage. Now he's back after. Of course, they could say, oh, it's a good time. He has one year now, everything is down. No, you have to build up again this motivation, especially when I think it's the third time he's coming back and he's getting over 30, I think. So it's, 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 it's that age where you think as a, let's say, sportsman, how shall we deal with it? To, again, to pass through this process of incredible struggle. It's like a musician who loses suddenly control of his hand and starts over and over again playing his technique. Rubinstein, the famous pianist, stopped playing at 40 because he said, I don't have any technique. He stopped for one year because he said, I have now finally, it was all talent. I'll get back in, in business, but then I will be a pianist. Now I'm just someone who's playing. Although he was playing over, all over in the world. But that's a process we hardly get to know. And I think with this time and with the privileged situation that you had, but suddenly a lot of other people also, you got into this fragile or this private situation where there's no mystification anymore. Mm -hmm. We only build up in our tunnel, everyone the way he does to achieve that point where suddenly you get into the, on, on, on. for me, on, I remember the first time I was conducting in Vienna, I was, I forgot to bow the public. I was so incredibly impressed. I'm in the Wiener Staatsoper. I'm, I mean. uh, oh, and I started and I was, oh shit, I forgot to, 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 to bow for the public. Oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, it, it took me at least two minutes. Oh, I didn't, I didn't oh, no, 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 just now concentrate. So it is, uh, it is this, 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 by moments, I think for every performer, always when I see this with the musicians in an orchestra, that who has they have to deliver in an incredible way. Uh, one of the two horn players we lost in one year in in because uh, they they went on pension in in uh, uh, in London in, in, in the Covent Garden Orchestra, and uh, Richard he was one of the I think he's at the Royal Col College or, or Guild or one of the schools in, uh, in in London. Fantastic teacher also, fantastic first horn, and he said just couldn't I. I have to step down because I want to concentrate on my students. And now I'm over a certain age that at 12 o'clock, I have to stop playing otherwise in the evening and I have to start focusing before it's just talent. I just did. So he, he stepped down He's 60 or 60 now, 61 now. And he went to the, the fourth horn position because he said, I can't perform anymore. And with this, the other guy, um, he just decided with the stress of one week schedule in London with so many different performances, sometimes with two CD DVD recordings. Uh, we have to deliver and I want when I deliver to be there and when I'm there I'm, I'm, I, I just have to and, and he, he stepped down of his position at 61 but he's in a, he was in a super shape but just saying no that's reality I think that's the same happens I think with every artist at the moment you say I have to have I step down and for performance even it's like Carlos Kleiber every time he went in the pit he was a second conductor because he you when you never knew he would go on because he said, I never will achieve the same level of yesterday. 
So he didn't start the conductor was the, the cover conductor had to go in. <laughs> but nobody well, is, is aware of this story. It's like Len Gould yeah. decided not to play him anymore for public. It's because he, for many reasons, but one is I think he, he felt much safer at home. And instead of reaching 2,000 people, he, he reached 2 million people with his recordings. And also, I think part of delivering on that particular moment for that particular public is always stays, I would say, artificial is, is a strange word, but there's still yeah. a process to get there in the tunnel during the day that you deliver at that point, 7.30, curtain goes, and you, you deliver. It's, mm. it's a very complicated process and for every performer from... For, from from the last two in an orchestra to the to the first soloist on the stage. Mm. Because I wonder if 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 we know more about not not just the competitions that everybody's winning and all the you know because of course we we read about that as if you if you look at the concert in in the in the um, program you read about all the achievements but sometimes and I'm not saying we should make a drama of it. But, but it's this thing where, where, you know, it's more about this is how I got here. You know, this is, I overcame a lot of obstacles. It wasn't easy or, you know, for two years I, I couldn't play or uh, something like that. You know, that, that would also inspire young musicians or young people to think, you know, it's not unachievable. It's not you know beyond my reach I just have to work hard at it and yeah um and, and and I think maybe also especially with classical music that it really looks uh, you know really unachievable or or it's d difficult to achieve what you are achieving but that it's just every day you know like you say practicing and getting into the routine but that you need to talk about that and, and, and tell, you know? Yeah. Have you seen this movie with Carlos Acosta where he tells his life? No, I haven't. It no. is fantastic how in Cuba he was someone who could dance, but they laughed at him because he was dancing in the street and his father mm -hmm. believed in him, but he didn't want to do classical ballet. And then finally he got into a school and they were, he didn't fit because he didn't come from the same class, uh, social class. And, it's an amazing movie to see how, at a certain point, he makes the switch when he, he won Lausanne when he was 16. Uh, mm -hmm. Hardly, uh, and then it, it is an incredible, as you say, evolution mm -hmm. from where from where do you come? What do you want? Are you supported by your parents? Is this an easy thing? Sometimes not. If, if you're not supported by your parents, it's also very difficult. So it's this personal evolution, I think, of every child. Mm -hmm. I think you have, you have to be, but that's when I started being from a pianist up to conducting also the, I had friends who helped me to believe in it as being naive don't go for the result just go for the process and if the process brings what you want you're lucky if it doesn't bring you're not unlucky then it will bring you something else but when mm. you fail it's not failing I think in that that it's this kind of naive belief that when you do what you love and what you want it will give you so much back it will be probably not that what you want. I wanted to conduct, uh, let's say, Parsifal. I was assistant and never got to that, but I got to what, I, what I'm doing now and I'm, I'm, mm. I'm very happy, but I'm, I'm not, my, my path changed. And I think this, this kind of, and I had good friends who, who, who were around, who could, uh, who could explain, as you say. But it's, mm. it's, when I started as a pianist also, it, I wanted to be an architect, so I, I, I didn't, I didn't, oh. I, I was quite quickly bored. So when I saw the structure of the piece, I knew it in my head by heart. And then to learn into the fingers, it's like with two hours, it's enough. But I had to study at least five, six hours a day. Mm. Although I was, I, I made concertos. I was the so-called next pianist of my generation at, at the time in Belgium. But um, um, I started as a repetitor in the opera house because someone said that you're a very good sight reader, why don't you do that? And it will bring back your connectivity with the broader path and only playing the piano as a soloist. I always said there are at least 10 million, 10 million pianists of your age who play better than you. So why would I have the effort of doing it? No, stop thinking like that. It's oh. then you, then nobody, nobody's gonna, if uh, nobody will do anything if you, if you, there are always 10 million people better than you, but that's mm. not the problem. That's not the situation. So it's this yeah. naive love who brings you then suddenly and a surprise, oh, this is it. And 
with, with looking back, where, where did it exactly happen? And it's even difficult to say, but it's because there's this drive, I think. Mm. And that's when, 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 when children are young, uh, people in, in evolution, but that's, I think, the same with, with every profession, but I think especially in ours, because we live outside of the world in a certain way. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very special abstract world where we're mm. searching for beauty and with art that is most of the time even created that more than 100 years ago. We live with, with a, a kind of, it's, it's perhaps with not, not that much respect, but I, I believe it with a lot of respect, uh, with museum art. There's not that much that is living art. Uh, and we believe in transmitting this. And that's why we want to achieve this incredible level um, of perfection to be able to deliver this tradition uh, and, and to re renovate this, this to, and bring in new thoughts on it. And, but we, uh, it's quite, I think there are not so many businesses that are occupied like playing with, like Pichakovsky, where you say it's, it's music of 150 years ago and you spent months to possess this. I don't mm -hmm. think there are many professions who say, I don't, I don't think a butcher, a butcher, I think, is, or a, a cook could be occupied with how did they cook in the 17th century? But yeah. he never will exactly. So it's, we, we have a very, very strange profession who lives in the past, but who is delivering today. And for that, I think you need this incredible, I can't have a better term than naivety in, of, of love and belief, mm. just yeah. to say, oh, we just go, just go. Mm. And try to be the best, uh, uh, the best in what you think that you should be. But I think that's also, you know, that's that's a great quality because I, I believe that the artists are the dreamers of the world, but also uh, proof that 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 comes true. Because of course, you know, like you say, you you had the dream to play the piano and you played it, and and then to conduct and and you conducting. So so all they all. I think you know when you hear where they started, then you think that must have been the dream to, you know, even if it's to get to MDV University or to get further or to be a concert pianist. So some some time there was this dream and they achieved it. Um, yeah. And I think that is um, that's amazing that you know that that also that I think um, artists have that quality. That naivety, but 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 in a good yeah. way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's it, when I have young, I, I coach quite a, a lot of young conductors, and they come and they ask me how, and then yeah, and and uh, it's then I once was with a famous conductor and said, but I've, I've done this and that and that and that. What could be the next step? I said, but Kuhn, I think you should uh, find that place where you think you can be the best. And then be the best. Mm. He said, yes, but that's very theoretical. He said, no, no, no. You mm. should investigate in, in, in between, in yourself, how and what. It's a very personal process. And to have this, to, to recognize in which and not what, what place you can function the best with yourself to achieve the best uh, what is in you. That's and nice. once you get there, so you will get noticed without any recommendation from anyone. You can be sure. I didn't understand that at all. So oh, why can't you recommend me there? And they say, no, no, no. They will come when you are ready. Mm. And it's very difficult to understand. I didn't understand that at all until that happened with me when suddenly 15 years ago, I was on a place where they recommended me for the Paris Opera. And suddenly I started, I did more than 300 shows for Paris without I said, but what is happening suddenly? I'm at, in the Garnier working with these fantastic dancers and, and orchestras without, is this me now doing this? Mm. Oh, no, it go, it, it go, yeah, next season, what are we doing? And the season after, what are we doing? And then Manu went to Vienna. Okay, well, who, you should come to Vienna. And, and, and it's like, that's where I, when, when I, I coach or try to explain this to the people, you have to possess absolutely what you try to achieve. But perhaps the most difficult process is to accept that you will have to do it. And oh. there are not that many people helping you. You will be very mm. alone in the process and just accumulate and mm. work and watch and speak. And, but you, you make the final decision if you want to do it or not. And it's not because you want to judge again, it's because you decide that's what I'm gonna do and that's the way. And I know it's theoretical, 
but that I think I believe it's absolutely true when, when, when you have a discussion with someone when he's doubting, to doubt is absolutely permitted. Everybody doubts. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that famous conductor told me it's always a half an hour too early. Really? <laughs> Which is fantastic. Yeah. And he's a world famous yeah. conductor. It's mm -hmm. always a half an hour too early. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. It's for everyone the same every day. Don't mm -hmm. worry. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. no, it, don't worry. Mm -hmm. So it is this kind of, again, what I say, naive belief, no, just do it and, and but search within your own capacities, how far you can develop and, and, and mistake is not, it's not, it's not important. That's where you learn. Mm -hmm. and, but this is amazing what you're telling me now. This is really very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, I never thought of it this way. Yeah. But he really said it's, it's you who decide. It's not the world. Mm -hmm. if, if you can make the switch, you will do something. If you, can't, if you wait always until they will recognize you, mm -hmm. they never will recognize you. Mm -hmm. so it's more you can say oh, it's very philosophical just give a ring to that guy then i can then i can do and can show who i am no 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 i haven't seen you doing this and that and that so i can't do anything for you mm -hmm. but don't worry just work just just focus just be relaxed mm -hmm. and the moment you it's like what they say in these books then the moment you don't long for it that much and we're not searching for it suddenly it will come on your way Mm. but it's so true it is so true yeah. and then that's what i try to give to to these young conductors i say don't look just do mm. and if it comes okay when it doesn't come no worry then will be something else or we'll you will become a famous cook but don't worry if it's not conducting mm. don't don't be stressed and don't panic because it's not coming mm. what happens a lot i think especially in this time with the, of these young people that they that's what i try to to explain to them just continue focusing. You will see. Just believe in the future yeah, and, and mm. do it. But be passionate about what you do and try to find your your focus. Mm. And do it alone, but with gathering information from wherever you can, which is very easy at the moment. Mm. Um, Kun, this uh, just tell me uh, just one more thing. Uh, what is your wish for the future for after Corona, for when this is all over? Uh, that's a very complicated question, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I hope, I mean, that's, <coughs> that's very sincere, that with this, in this most unhuman tragedy that happens with us and in, 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 in most drastic way of interfering in, in, in people's life, I think many people learned a lot and I hope that we won't lose all what we learned in this one year. Mm. I think this is one of the things that is that I can see already now that on, on certain occasions people get so quickly back back to certain habits that are would say yes it functions but it doesn't go that far as it could be because of nah, 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 nah. so I mm. hope all what we learned during this, all this, is this reflection? I don't know if it's theory, I don't think so. It's just this, I, I think there's this, this fight for survival, especially in, in our, I think, form of, of uh, communicating with people that we choose in performing arts or in arts in general, but spe specifically in, 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 in performing arts that we don't get back to business as usual mm. of producing, performing, uh, I think when, when we could have even 10% or 20% left from what we learned during that time, I think uh, we could gain a lot in what we do. Mm. I do think uh, people, or we are all affected in some way. I mean, not affected, but we, we will all come out of this somehow that we have thought about things and, and changed a little bit and changed our perspective about things a little bit. So I agree with you. I think... And I also hope that uh, we won't go back to to um, the old way of of doing, you know, the positive things, but but not the negative things. Yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. being in the wings in, in Paris, and one of the famous ballet masters, Patrice Bar. I had uh, I don't remember the dancer uh, really, but it was 
he had long legs and, and I don't know if it was uh, Jose Martinez or someone else. Um, it was a variation of the Prince. Da -di -da -di -da -di -da 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 at the end of, mm -hmm. of Cinderella. And uh, he said, but Kundis was, c'était très bien, c'était très très bien. C'était parfait pour lui. It was absolutely wonderful. But next time, don't make his life so comfortable. Oh. <laughs> and he said, it's about challenge. It's only ballet. That's what he said to oh, me. Okay. <laughs> uh, so to say, the game, the game, please. We need the game. Mm. Mm. And this we lose sometimes the game because we, we are so obliged to deliver every night and when we don't deliver, we get punished and blah, blah, blah. So mm. I, I hope that this brings us back to a certain reality where the game yeah. is perhaps more back on moments. When I see how, how we have to be focused in London to deliver every mm. night on so many levels and, and, and uh, when, when the game could, could, could be back in there, we have a fantastic director mm. also, both in Birmingham and in, in London. When I mm. see how they manage, but if we could have the game in it, yeah, I think this would this would this this and delivering in the same way, but perhaps in a, I don't know if it's, it needs to be a more relaxed way, mm. but in a, in a broader way of that. Besides, it's like friends and and, and in a positive way also dancers say, oh, we didn't know that that existed mm. because we are so focused on what we do. After a while, it's like suddenly at eighteen and even before as a musician, you it's like when you're uh, in the Olympic teams skiing, there's not one skier who didn't start before three years skiing. Mm. Uh, I think in ballet, it's not three years, but it could be, isn't it? Uh, for a musician, they say also it's about four or five years. So, it, uh, so since that point, you're focusing on certain things and you lose yeah. sight of what is around. I think this, this made a stop in such a, a you're right. confrontation. Yeah. Yeah, that, you're right. That mm. this could this could bring us you know, like never did before. This mm. didn't happen any. I think it's even. I had discussions with friends. Is this worse than wartime? I think it's worse. Mm. Wartime yeah. is much more, um, of course, painful in many ways. There are so much, but uh, it is you can't compare it nearly. But mm. life went on in a certain way. For many people, life stopped now. Mm. Yeah. And no, it yeah, affected much right, more people yeah. at the same time. Then, then, and, 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 but it's a, it's a very ethical discussion, of course, and you hardly can touch it or, or compare it. But it's, I, I'm, I hope, as you say, that, that we uh, will we'll gather this, in, this new information, emotions, the way we, we look at mm. things. We'll, we'll give it, we'll breathe in a, in a different way. Let's put yeah. it that way. Yeah, yeah. No, David, I, I'm, as I said, I live on cloud nine, so I, I believe it will be uh, all good in the end. <laughs> 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 but Kun, this was so lovely to talk to you. It's and fantastic. do you ever come to Vienna? Do you come at to Vienna? Moment, at the moment, I know the, the direction changed and I still will have to make clear that I'm existing I think oh uh, okay okay so but when I you hope come... because I loved working there but it, it's uh, and there are no plans at the moment okay but whenever you come will you please write me because I would so love to meet you in person fantastic let's do that that would be so great yeah one and wonderful and... initiative to do all these talks with everyone it's it's very uh comforting Thank you so much. And, um, and thank you so much for your time, really, to, to talk and all your insight. This was really very interesting, yeah. But have a, have a lovely afternoon. Yeah, and, take care. Um, yeah, and stay healthy. And, and um, yeah, it's very inspiring that you're eating so healthy as well. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah. It became a time. habit, so I will take it with me. It's, that's something I achieved now. Yeah, you see, yeah, something positive, <laughs> good. <laughs> okay, Kun, have a lovely, uh, ha Thank lovely you. Thank afternoon. You so much. Bye. Take care. You too. The same. Thank Bye. you. Bye.